When other girls wear low ponies, they look so cute, and I look like a founding father. I just, it doesn't look good on me. Okay, anyways. Good morning, welcome to today's video. I realized that the top half of my English muffin is, oh, see, I knew it was coming. Certainly not going to fit on my sandwich. Can you see this? That's a, that's a, that's a hefty sandwich for the size of this English muffin. I need my paper towel, hold on. Now I have not been through a lot of injuries in my CrossFit career, which is kind of crazy, but I have broken my hand and partially torn my hip flexor. And now, now you might not be able to, oh no, you can see. <laughs> uh, we're trying to cover it. I got a, a Fraxel dual laser treatment on Friday. And this is essentially like the most intense facial laser that you can get and all my years living in Florida without ever wearing sunscreen you know it just it aged my skin quite a bit and I had quite a few sunspots and like discoloration from like burning my face and then it peeling off whatever but you can't work out like you cannot work out for at least five days after getting the fraxel and today is the fifth day i checked in with my esthetician and she said i was fine as long as i don't sweat a lot and i noticed in my previous video when i was asking about like what types of things you want to see a very common thread was about injury or like how to get back into working out when you haven't been working out and if you didn't see my broken hand series, go check those videos out. That was a little bit more intense. This is not as like, you know, wacky. But I thought it would be a good opportunity to try to get back into working out. I haven't worked out since, um, so last Thursday was the last time I worked out. Today's Wednesday, so it's almost been a full week. And I've eaten as normal. I know that's a question that a lot of people ask. I've eaten as normal. I'm still not really tracking. And I just wanna get back into it today. So I have to be really careful to not sweat. I'm gonna take you through it. We're gonna have a great day today. Just try not to, just try not to judge. through how I decided to approach this day of training. I have my phone set up and I'm talking to it because I was recording this warm up for my app. Um, but really with any workouts, I like to do at least five minutes of dynamic mobility stretching warm up. Just helps me feel like I'm getting ready for the workout and not like pushing anything too soon, especially since I hadn't been working out for quite a few days. So once I do that, this was just a five minute upper body dynamic warm up. I'm going to get into some half kneeling shoulder press. Now with today's workout, I definitely did not want to do anything where I was elevating my heart rate past zone three. And honestly, I tried to keep it in zone two the entire time. If you're not familiar with your heart rate zones, you can just do a quick little like Google conversion chart thing, and it will tell you how to find your specific heart rate zones for your age and everything like that. But honestly, the goal with this was just to keep it light and simple. And I do that by focusing on my breathing, not using super heavy weights, not doing high reps. Obviously I'm not doing CrossFit on this day. So that's just something I kind of like to remind myself or clients who are coming back from injury. But obviously if you are coming back from an injury, know that everyone is different, every body's different and every recovery period is different. And you should also be of course, listening to your doctor and his or her recommendations for when you can safely get back into working out. 
Now, obviously, if you're watching this video, I'm assuming that you have been cleared by your doctor to work out or you're maybe just like in a funk and looking for some motivation to ease back into it. And of course, you know, with every injury, there's specific things that you can or can't do. I'm going to try to cover as much as I possibly can in this video. But just to give you an example, when I broke my hand, obviously, I couldn't do anything with my left hand that involved gripping, holding, but to prevent my shoulder from getting immobile, from being in a cast for however long that was, I did a lot of banded shoulder mobility work, just general shoulder mobility to keep my shoulder nice and warm while it was so immobile from being in the cast. So of course that's gonna depend on like what type of injury you're recovering from, but be aware of your mobility limitations when you are coming back from injury because you will have them. This doesn't mean that you're doomed, you're not losing all of your gains and starting from square one, but the biggest mistake that I see people doing when coming back from injury or time off is expecting to be exactly where they were when they stopped. Now, in this specific video, I was only out for five days. So realistically, my strength did not decrease that much within five days but when I did break my hand my strength in my upper body went down so much over the course of time from being in the cast and then in recovery PT so you have to meet yourself where you are currently this is something that I say to my nutrition clients as well you can't expect to be where you were pre-injury or pre-funk whatever it is that you're going through you have to just say okay this is where I'm at today and this is what I can safely achieve today to make a step in the right direction for tomorrow and you know, honestly, that's going to look different for everybody. If you're sitting there in a cast from your ankle to your hip and you physically cannot do any type of movement at all for six to eight weeks, you're going to have to take it much slower than someone who is just coming off from a bad weekend, you know? So you have to think, okay, you get to do this. Yes, you might've had an injury. Yes, you might have an off week or an off month, or maybe you took a really long hiatus from the gym and you're getting back into it. But the point is that you're getting back into it. You can start small one day at a time, one rep at a time. The point is that you get to move your body. There are people who cannot move their bodies. There are people who can't get to a gym, who can't eat or don't have the accessibility to the foods that we do. So I try to really put it into perspective for myself when I do feel frustrated or like, oh, I'm so annoyed I can't work out today. You know, that's a really privileged thing to say. And I have to check myself with that kind of thing. And I know a lot of us are guilty of that. But at the end of the day, you're getting to do something for your body that's benefiting you. So it's best to just take it slow and do what you can right now. Don't sit there throughout your entire workout and say to yourself, oh my gosh, this is not the weight that I used to lift. This is not what I could do. Who cares? You're doing something right now that's bettering yourself and that's what you need to focus on. Now I know that was a lot of... <laughs> I just almost said mobility, <laughs> motivation with Manders. But when it comes to physical limitations and having to adapt, there are a lot of great YouTube, oh, my son's being so cute during this, look at her, oh, she's an angel. There are a lot of great YouTube videos out there to show you modifications for things, but I'm just gonna tell you in this example, this is something that if I was limited in my lower body, let's say I had that hip injury, right? You can still do a lot of upper body pressing as long as you're not putting any strain on your hips. Now, obviously with injuries like your back, you're going to have to do things that are mostly in the seated or maybe prone position. There are a lot of different ways to do exercises. In this example, I'm just doing a single arm chest press on a bench. But like, let's say I had a hand injury on my right arm. I can still do a single arm chest press on my left arm. You know, there's a lot of different things that you still can do, even with limitations. I actually feel like it's sometimes easier to have an upper body injury than it is a lower body injury because you can do so much more with like one arm versus things you can do with one leg. But I think overall, if you're putting in the time for recovery, that should be your main priority instead of just like, oh, I need to get back in the gym and get where I was. You need to focus on addressing the underlying issue that came with your injury. Of course, I had a freak accident, so that kind of doesn't apply. But like my hip, I never warmed up my hips ever when I first started doing CrossFit. Something that a lot of us CrossFitters are really bad at. And now I put the time in to do upper body mobility, hip mobility, I get deep tissue, I get acupuncture. You know, I, again, I know some of those things are privileges, but at the same time, I put the effort into my recovery so I can prevent injury in the future. And honestly, if all else fails and you have two legs and can walk, definitely walk. And I will say, I was dealing with some shins, some shin, 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 some shin splints recently, and that was not an option for me because the shin splints aggravated the injury. So whatever you're trying to do to ease yourself 
back into working out, make sure that you're not doing something that continuously aggravates it either. But if you are maybe just like in a mental funk and you can't just mentally get yourself to the gym to work out, get yourself outside and go for a walk. It's so good for you. Walking is so underrated, especially for those of us who are sitting at a desk all day. So I just feel like that's one step, literally and figuratively, that you can do to help get yourself back into a better mindset or back from an injury. Look at this. If you haven't seen my Instagram reels of protein shakes, I just made a Girl Scout cookie, a Thin Mint one, and it's so freaking good. That is how I handle like easing my way back into training. I'm not gonna be doing any like CrossFit really intense stuff probably until next week, but you can still definitely do things when you're injured or like, you know, you're coming back from some time off. It's just important that you take it really slow. You listen to your body or your doctor, like you don't follow what they're telling you to do. But also like it doesn't mean that you have to completely go off the rails and just, you know, forget your eating and working out in general. Obviously, if you injure like your lower body, that reduces a lot of things you can do. But like as a whole, I feel like you can still feel good about like your health and movement, even if you got injured or been out of it for a little while. So let me know if this video was helpful. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up, click subscribe. And if you want at home body weight, dumbbell, CrossFit style, or those workouts that you just saw me do, check out my app. The link is in the description. It is $1 for your first month and $14 a month after that for unlimited workouts. So that's the end of this video. I hope that you guys enjoy and I'll see you in my next one.